Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to use the Bodo3 cloud formation functionality to call the create stack API in our AWS account so that we can create a cloud formation stack and just deploy it out into our account from a template file. So we're going to be making use of the create stack API right here. And let's just start out by taking a look at some of the different parameters that are expected by this particular API. Now, remember that if we take a look at the REST API documentation over here, everything that we see in the REST API documentation is going to more or less correspond directly to the parameters that we have right here in the Python API. Now, sometimes you might see certain parameters in here that are not specified in the REST API documentation, and it's possible that that could just be an SDK-specific feature for Python, or a, maybe a, if you're doing PowerShell automation, you might have a SDK feature that's unique in PowerShell, like uh, PowerShell automatically does pagination, for example, for some services, like listing objects in S3 buckets and things like that, whereas Python, the Python SDK doesn't automatically handle that for you unless you explicitly tell it to. Uh, so just keep that in mind that by and large, these are going to map directly to the parameters over in the REST API documentation. So if you don't see what you're looking for down here in the parameter documentation, then just switch over to the REST API docs and you should find what you're looking for. Now, something that's interesting about the Create Stack API is that you have multiple choices in, in terms of how you deploy an actual cloud formation template as a stack inside of your AWS account. So there's two, two options here that you have in terms of passing in the template. So one is going to be the template body, and that's just going to be a string. And that's going to contain the actual text of your JSON or YAML cloud formation template that you'd like to deploy into your account. The other parameter is going to be called a template URL. And you're like, well, that's a string too. Yeah, but this, the difference here is that we're not embedding our template. We're actually going to reference our template over in an S3 bucket. So you have a couple of options here. There is a slight caveat to it. So I generally like to use template body because we're not taking a dependency on an S3 bucket where you could potentially run into permissions issues and things like that. Um, but there is a caveat where if you have a template of a certain size, if you have a, a massive, massive cloud formation template, then you might exceed the size of the template body parameter. So if we take a look at the documentation right down here for the template body parameter, you'll actually notice that the template body for cloud formation templates that are being passed in using this parameter here, template body, is 51,200 bytes. So basically more or less 50 kilobytes. So if your template file is really, really large, I mean, 50 kilobytes is a rather significant amount of text. If it's larger than that, then you're going to have to switch over to using template URL instead. And as you can see right here, it must point to either an Amazon S3 bucket or an object inside of a bucket. And that's going to uncap you up to about 450 kilobytes. So if I'm doing my math correctly, that's approximately nine times the size of the template that you can pass in with the template body here. Now, what you'll notice is that this template body is conditional. So it says you must either specify template body or template URL, but not both, because it wouldn't make sense for me to deploy something in a template body, but then also do a template URL, because it's like, well, which one takes precedence? What if there's a conflict between those? You know, how do you kind of resolve those differences and then kind of merge them together? That's a little bit awkward. So basically, they're just saying either do the body or do the URL. It's up to you. Now, we've also got the option to pass in a Python dict, uh, just a key value pair for our input parameters to our template. So if you are deploying a CloudFormation template that has input parameters up at the top parameters section, then you can specify those as a dict here, or actually a, a, an array of parameters. So if we take a look at the syntax right up here, for the example, it would be a list of objects, of dicts here. And we have parameter key, we have parameter value, and then we can also say, should you use the previous value, yes or no? And we also have, what is the resolved value? So typically those two are not required, but parameter key and parameter value are absolutely going to be required because that's the values that are going to get passed in to the template. Now let's see what other parameters we have here. So we have things like disable rollback. So basically if we deploy a cloud formation stack and for some reason the stack creation fails, maybe we specify for like an EC2 instance, we specify an invalid Amazon machine image ID, or maybe for an AWS Lambda function that we're trying to deploy, we specify an invalid runtime value or something like that. If the CloudFormation template 
just fails to deploy for some reason, we can disable the rollback feature so that CloudFormation, the, the service, the backend service, won't try to roll back the resource creations that were successful as part of that creation. And that's actually really useful if you're trying to do some kind of debugging to try to inspect those resources and figure out exactly why they failed to create. Uh, we also have the option to set rollback configuration here. So if you want to set a rollback trigger, you can do that as well. There's um, also a timeout period. So if you're expecting your CloudFormation stack to deploy in X amount of time and it fails to complete in that period of time, you can just have it fail automatically for you. You can also integrate with Simple Notification Service to get notifications about updates from your CloudFormation stack deployment. And then this is a really important property right here, parameter here, which is called capabilities. And so if you are defining any identity and access management resources inside of your template, it's basically just a mechanism for you to declare to the CloudFormation service that you understand that I am uh, policy permissions or users or roles are going to be created as part of that CloudFormation stack. Um, and the reason that they do that is because if you are deploying somebody else's template that somebody else created, then it's possible that they could be um, maliciously trying to trick you by using that template to actually gain access to your AWS account by deploying an overly permissive policy or overly permissive identity and access management user or something like that, they could potentially compromise your account. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and find a CloudFormation stack that we want to deploy. Let's head over here to our AWS CloudFormation user guide documentation. And if you remember from the first video, we talked about how there are some sample templates out there. There's also this thing called the template reference, which is super important because this is actually what you will read if you want to author CloudFormation templates from scratch. But for, let, for now, let's see if we can find one that works for us. Under the sample templates, you'll see that it's broken down by region. Now, in theory, you would think that, hey, a CloudFormation template should kind of work in pretty much any region, right? Well, if there's a value that's hard-coded into a template that, uh, for example, references an Amazon machine image, AMI IDs are actually going to be unique on a per-region basis. So if you reference Ubuntu 20.04 LTS AMIs in Oregon, that's going to be a different ID than the exact same image over in the US East to Ohio region, for example. So just be aware of that as well. So let's go down to the Oregon region, which is the region that I am working in here. And then we've got a list here by services. I'm going to do something that's just really straightforward, like deploy a DynamoDB table. So let's go ahead and just filter down to DynamoDB. And then let's take a look at the just simple DynamoDB table here, uh, just for starters. And as you can see, we've got our template right here. Looks good. Let's go ahead and go over to raw data. And so this is actually going to be in JSON syntax. I personally prefer YAML syntax, but uh, let's go ahead and just use this JSON one here just for the sake of simplicity so we don't have to go through and actually create one from scratch for now. And so what I'm going to do is come back into my project here, and I'm just going to create a file, and I'll call this mystack.json. And so we'll go ahead and create that file. We'll paste in our text from our template here. And it looks like it inserted some extra spaces, but that shouldn't really affect the validation of the template because it's just JSON syntax. We've got quotes around everything, so that's totally fine. And so now what we need to do is come over into our Python script here, and we actually need to call the create stack API. So I'll go ahead and just comment out these couple of lines here that are printing out the different attributes on our CFN client object. And so let's go ahead and read in the file from our file system here. So I need to go ahead and do import OS. Uh, I need to import from OS. So from OS, import the dir name function, and that'll allow us to retrieve our script directory. So we'll do script dir equals dir name, and then underscore underscore file underscore underscore. And so this will basically get our script directory. And I'll just go ahead and print that out. So we'll do print on script dir just so we can see the fully qualified path to our script directory right here so that we can dynamically locate our cloud formation file and then we'll go ahead and do uh, open on our script file here so we'll do an f string here and we'll say script dir and then close that off and do slash my stack dot json here we'll just get rid of my video here so we can see things a little bit better and then we'll go ahead and put it into read mode here and let's go ahead and do a, a with statement here and I'll go ahead and do stack equals empty here just to initialize my variable. And then let's set stack equals um, 
let's do as fd and then fd dot read and so we'll go ahead and just read that in and we'll close it off and then now that we've got the stack here let's go ahead and just print out the stack just to make sure that we retrieve that correctly we'll go ahead and hit f5 and run our python script here and of course i need to fix my import here so it should be from os.path not from os here let's go ahead and save that and restart our script here and make sure that our stack prints out successfully here Let's scroll down here to the end in our output terminal here. And sure enough, we have the JSON from our template here. So now we need to figure out which of these parameters we need to pass in. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parameters here. So this one has a t default value on it, so we don't need to pass that one in. Same with the read capacity units. Same with the hash key element type. Um, let's take a look at the hash key element name. So this is going to be a string value, however it does not have a default value. So we actually need to specify what the hash key or partition key in DynamoDB terminology is going to be. So we're going to need to specify that one parameter in our input parameters when we deploy the CloudFormation stack. Otherwise we'll get an error when we try to deploy it. So let's go ahead and just update our file here. We'll remove some of that extra space. And then what we need to do is actually call our CFN client dot create stack. So that's going to be our API call that we're creating a stack from. And then we need to specify our input parameters here. So for the create stack API call, we'll take a look at our documentation here for our create stack API call. And we need to specify a stack name. So that's going to be a string. So we'll go ahead and plug that in over here. We'll set stack name equal to DynamoDB table, for example. You can call it whatever you'd like to. And then we also need to specify either template body or template URL. And in our case, we're going to be doing template body. So let's go ahead and pass template body in. We'll set that to stack because the stack variable right here contains our text. And then let's go ahead and take a look at parameters here. So for parameters, we need to specify a list of dict objects. And then we've got parameter key and parameter value there. So let's go ahead and set params equal to an array of dict objects. And we'll go ahead and just add a new one here. We'll set parameter key and put quotes around that. And then we'll set parameter value as well. And we need to go ahead and get the parameter name. Make sure you put a comma in there so it resolves properly. So we'll go ahead and grab the parameter name from our template here, which is going to be hash key element name. And then let's say that we're creating, I don't know, person objects or something. So let's call it like person ID is going to be our hash key element name. I'm not actually going to put any data in the table, but if we were going to theoretically in the future create some people objects, then maybe I just want to have a person ID field there. So that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and pass in that dict into the parameters parameter. Because keep in mind that the parameters parameter here is actually passing these parameters into the CloudFormation stack. They're not actually Python parameters in this case. So we'll go ahead and plug in params here. And then let's just check to see if there's anything else we need here. We don't need rollback disabled. We don't need our rollback configuration. We're not doing anything like that. Uh, we don't need capabilities because we're not creating any identity and access management roles. We could set a timeout if we wanted to, but DynamoDB tables typically create pretty quickly. So I think we're pretty good with where we're at right here. So let's go ahead and just save this file. And then we'll go ahead and hit F5 and do a run our Python file here. My uh, shell's not responding here. So I'm going to go ahead and do an F1 and reload window just to reconnect to our remote environment here. And then once this comes back up, we'll just hit F5 to execute our script here. So let the terminal initialize. All right, there it is. Let's hit F5, do debug Python file, and hopefully this runs successfully here. And it looks like we have a uh, validation error here saying that our hash key element name failed to satisfy the constraint, must only contain alphanumeric characters. So of course I put an underscore in the uh, person ID here. So let's just call it person ID with no underscore and then try to rerun this. And this time we should have much better success. All right, so sure enough, everything looks good to go here. So now what we could do is actually comment out our create stack API and we could do CFN client dot 
I believe it's describe stacks, but let's just confirm that over here in the documentation. We just want to basically validate that it was created successfully. So we have describe stacks right here, and we don't need to actually pass in anything here. Uh, if we don't pass in a stack name, it'll just list back all of the stacks for us. So let's just do describe stacks, and we'll print out the result of that right here. Let's run this again, and we should get back a object representing our stack. Sure enough, here it is. It prints out pr pretty much all the details for it. We have our stack ID, we have our stack status, which is in create complete. That's a good thing. It means that our template deployed successfully. And so we are good to go here. So that's how we can use create stack as well as describe stacks to deploy a stack and then just confirm that it was created successfully. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.